Holy Spirit. You see, there's a lot of things that people talk about and a lot of things that people do. You know, you've probably seen some strange things, you know, on Christian television or you either heard about or seen on YouTube or videos or vid not videos, but videos that have some weird acting people doing some strange things, either like gold dust or playing with snakes or rolling around on the ground or barking like dogs or doing strange, unusual behaviors that probably are not necessarily the gifts of the Holy Spirit, but are reactions of people to the action of the Holy Spirit in their life. In other words, they are the ones creating this extra effect, but that's not what the Holy Spirit does. And in order to teach and to properly put that person of the Godhead into the right perspective, you have to have a good foundation. You have to have the reality of knowing who God is. And if you don't know who God is, then you can't discover who the Holy Spirit is, much less how he operates and what might be counterfeit to what God is doing that while it may look interesting because it's so supernatural, it may not be spiritual at all. It may be something completely wrong that people have tried to say is right. And the only way that we're able to do that, you know, at Vivo, is to go back to our roots, is to go back to a place where we know and we're confident of the truth that we've heard from the beginning. That truth that we've heard that was from the foundations of the world, even Jesus himself speaking to us about the Comforter that was to come. You see, when I got saved, it was pretty simple about the Holy Spirit, was that we were taught that he was a part of the Godhead, and we were taught by Chuck Smith, a man of God, about all the gifts of the Spirit and the things of the Spirit. And I went on to study with Romaine and learn some other things that you know Chuck didn't really talk about, but of all the things that Chuck did talk about, he gave us a foundation that we would not be confused, abused, or used by anybody that would be possibly deceptive or going into some Pentecostal weird ideas. Because, you see, Chuck had been a part of some pretty interesting people in his day. Catherine Coleman was around. PTL Club had come up. Uh, the 700 Club was getting started. I mean, there was a lot of things by the Holy Spirit that God was doing in raising up men of God. And a lot of things seemed to be right. Even in the Calvary Chapel movement, there were a lot of things that were tried out that possibly were not necessarily the best, but were done in innocence. And so, as the foundation was laid, then God began to show us the way that we would understand who this person, the Holy Spirit, was. In so doing, Chuck Smith eventually recorded probably the most factual, actual reality tapes that there are, which was called the Holy Spirit Series Number 1 and Holy Spirit Series Number 2. And eventually what they did was that they transcribed them into a book. And that's what we're going to do in Vidivo Spirit Series, is we're going to read the book. Because you see, everything that we do in Vidivo, we try to establish it as being reading the Word. Somewhere, at some point in time, it should take us back to the Word. Because Jesus is the Word of God. Jesus is our sustenance that we live by when we taste and see that the Lord, He is good. When we read His Word, we're tasting of the Lord. When we study Him and when we listen to Him, then we're actually growing in faith and knowledge of Him Himself. Not just the Bible as though it were some dead book because that's what the Jews did with the Torah. But rather, we're becoming a part of the living Word. And that's why the book was called Living Water, because that's what the Holy Spirit is meant to do, is cause us to taste of the Lord's living water that the Word of God is called. And he highlights it, and we could not understand the Bible except that we have the Holy Spirit in us. So, for video series, if you're, video spirit, if you're a non-Christian, then let me clarify something for you. You can't receive the things of the Spirit because they're spiritually discerned. You must ask the Holy Spirit to inspire you. You must ask the Holy Spirit to lead you. You must ask the Holy Spirit to guide you. And the first thing that he's going to do is that if you are not a born-again Christian, he's going to convict you of sin because he's going to say, look, you need to get this right first before I can help you to understand the Bible. You need to have a relationship. You need to be born again of my spirit. So the Spirit of God will not work with you unless you are already born of that spirit. And that's what Jesus said when he said that you must be born again, for without being born of the Spirit, you cannot see the kingdom of God, you cannot enter it. 
You cannot even know the things of the Spirit. So, in video Spirit, we're going to read Living Waters to study about the Holy Spirit and His work in the life of the person, the life in the world, the Holy Spirit in the world, the Holy Spirit in the church, how the Holy Spirit works with us, how the Holy Spirit instructs us, how the Holy Spirit guides us, how the Holy Spirit convicts us of sin, how the Holy Spirit points us to Jesus, but not how the Holy Spirit is abused in the ways that people are trying to confuse it today, which is to give out some weird prophecy names and games and playing all these weird ideas that they come up with. We want to very factually and actually present a solid word to you in study and in relationship in the video series so that it's founded upon the anointing that God gave to Chuck Smith to give to us. When Chuck was teaching in the Holy Spirit series, it was wonderful, it was powerful, it was anointed. So much so that everyone kept listening to those tapes because they were, quite frankly, solid, factual teaching that you could use and apply to your life that most people that I gave the tape series to got baptized in the Holy Spirit. Man, they went on to become dynamite men and women of God. I'd always say, hey, look, you know, if you don't know about the Holy Spirit, here, I'll give you a tape series, you know, you can study it, and you'll know everything you need to know. Well, then they made a book out of it called Living Waters, and that's what we're using. But the tape series in my life, as I've used it throughout the life of the believers, I have seen that anointing that God placed in a man and caused him to be more than what he actually was. To be used of God, to be anointed and appointed to be an instrument that God could use to teach us who the Holy Spirit was. So, in so doing, we want to stay under that covering. Just like we want to stay under the spout where the blessings come out, we want to stay under that umbrella of understanding so that we don't stray off into weird areas or get into some kind of tangent things that people that have done so have done so to their own demise. Even crawling around on the ground and acting like dogs. I mean, if you act like a dog, you look like a dog and you bark like a dog, then don't tell me you're not a dog because frankly, I don't think that's the spirit of God. I think that's the dog spirit. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean. So let's just stay with what we know is true and factual according to the Word of God. And that's what Video Spirit is going to do. So I wanted to start this series by giving credit and glory to God for what he has done in Chuck Smith. Chuck Smith, when I saw him and met him and you know, and was sitting under his teaching, was a very interesting person because he was used by God at a specific time and a specific purpose in a specific way. But he was like a David to us because there was good things and there was bad things. There was flesh man and there was real man, you know, and there was also the spirit of God that when he taught, as God inspired him, God used that to minister to many people in a way that they had never heard before. And in that way, we acknowledge that God is the one, by his Holy Spirit, that made the man into what he became and has become, even likened unto Jesus' teachings. So let's just trust in the Lord with all our heart, even not in our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledging him that God has used Chuck Smith in such a way that that anointing, I pray for you, would come upon you in the same way that the Holy Spirit came upon Chuck Smith. That as you hear these words, and as you apply them to your life, that you would receive the same anointing that has come from God, that will return to God, and that will lead you in the truth, the way, and the life that God would have you to be in Jesus. The book itself is called Living Waters. It's the power of the Holy Spirit in your life by Chuck Smith. We're not going to, um, the way that we're going to do it is basically read it and then comment on it and try to highlight it in certain ways to make it applicable to our generation and our society as we live in it today. Because after all, this was still applicable in its day as well as today and shall be in the future. But the book itself is Living Waters and the first part is called Who is the Holy Spirit? and it's called Personality Plus, and we're just taking each little segment, so it'll be short. Next time that you see these video spirit, you'll see that it's a short segment, so that it's more like a, almost like a devotional, as opposed to a teaching, even though it is a topical teaching on the Holy Spirit. Personality Plus, I pray the Father, and He will give you another helper, that He may abide with you forever even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive 
because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. John 14, 16 and 17. Jesus was a great one to have around while he walked upon this earth. People learned to trust in him as the master of every situation. When you had him around, you didn't worry about something going wrong. You knew he would take care of everything. Those who had been with him for very long knew that he could handle any situation that might come up. A tax collector giving you a bad time trying to collect taxes, that I don't really do. No problem. Jesus is here. Go down and catch a fish, the master tells Peter. Take the coin out of his mouth and pay the taxes. What a handy one to have around. Man, imagine that. Or suppose you've attracted a big crowd of people and you're short on food. <laughs> Not to worry. Here's a little boy with five loaves and two fishes. Sit the people down in companies and Jesus will take care of them all. And when it's all over, you find you've collected 12 baskets full of leftovers. As I said, a handy one to have around is Jesus. Or maybe the Pharisees are trying to trip you up and stump you with some kind of technical question. Don't sweat it. Jesus will handle them. Don't give it another thought. Just leave it to the Master. Okay, but what if you're out in a stormy sea in danger of sinking? What then? Same song, fourth verse. Jesus has the power to still the storm and to bring you safely into a desired haven. As I said, it's always great to have Jesus around. That's the lesson the disciples learned over and over for three wonderful years. They discovered that Jesus was an amazing, handy person to have around. They, just, they never had to worry when Jesus was present. They learned to relax and be confident because they knew the Lord was there to help. That segment ought to be a full reality of who we need to recognize the Holy Spirit doing for us. We need to have Jesus around. We need to be with Jesus. Jesus needs to be with us. You see, if you have him around, you could be fed. If you have him around, the storms of life are taken care of. If you have him in your life, you have nothing to fear because Jesus is there. Jesus is with you. Jesus is near. The point that we want to bring out in this, especially at the beginning, is that you have to have Jesus. Because without Jesus, you can do nothing. But with Jesus, everything is possible because Jesus will do it through you, he will do it to you, and he will do it in you. So without knowing Jesus, you have absolutely no reason to go any farther. But in knowing Jesus, then you would ask him to come into your life. You must ask God to reach down and touch you right now. You must ask God to bring a reality check to your life and to say, Yes, I need Jesus in my life. Yes. I don't care what it takes, put him there. Yes, if it means I have to admit I'm a sinner, then let me be a sinner for the sake of knowing Jesus. But let me know Jesus no matter what it takes and what it costs. For I must know Jesus in order for these things to be true. So in reality, having Jesus around isn't just enough to say, well, he's around somewhere. You have to have Jesus with you. And you have to ask Jesus to be in you. And when you do, when you call upon the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. For everyone that calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Jesus said it and Jesus did it. For everyone that testifies can tell you of all these miracles that came true. And history recorded it as such. Jesus was not only handy to have around, Jesus was the man to be counted on in everything that you need. So whatsoever it is that you think that you are having an issue with, Jesus can meet you right now, right where you at, right where you at, right where you are at, even now as we study the Holy Spirit. So before you go any farther, before you look at the next Vidivo Spirit segment, segment, before you study about the Holy Spirit, you must ask Jesus into your life. You must say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me of anything that might be stopping me from being in relationship with you. If it means forgiveness of sin, then forgive me of my sins. If it means giving you my life, then I give you my life. If it means acknowledging that there's no other way that I could be saved, then God, I acknowledge that. But God, give me your son today and cause him to live in me that I might live in him and that I might be alive to the things of the Spirit. For God, without Jesus, I cannot know the Spirit. So God, lead me now and 
save me from my sins. Save me from myself. Save me from the world. That no longer recognizes its creator, but I recognize that I need you. So God, help me to find you. And God has said that He loved the world so much that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You should not perish. You don't need to perish. You don't have to perish. All you need to do is ask, and you will receive. Seek, and you would find. Knock, and the door would be open, for Jesus would come to you. Because Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So pray that. Take that as a reality. If you do, then continue on and see it through to learn what the Spirit would say to you this day as He speaks to us in His way through the Video Spirit series and through His own Word of God as He reveals it to us in the Bible. For we ask that God would be glorified in all we do, we say, we speak, and we live. In Jesus' name.